up it's your boy sit in the back with another beautiful fantastic amazing terrific video that is and today i'm back with another reaction video you already know it's by the odd ones out he's awesome awesome cartoonist amazing artist at that matter cool guy in general as you can tell on the screen see he's cool amazing but um not a kid good i cannot talk to them not going to keep the intro too long. You already know what the deal is. Make sure you share this with your wonderful, beautiful friends and family. Okay. We're just going to put that out there. All right. And let's hop into the video. By the way, I did a podcast. Um, I'll leave it in the description. Please tell me how I did on it. I need all the criticism I can get. Go check it out if you have the time. If not, it's cool. But anyway, I'm just going to get into the video. Let's go. Hello, I just wanted to let you know that the Scribble Showdown Tour is coming back. We'll be going to these places on these dates. If you're interested, then check out the link in the description. Otherwise, enjoy the video. Also, I have facial hair now. You do. He has facial hair now. Recently, I read the worst YouTube comment ever, and I can't stop thinking about it. This comment lives in my head completely rent-free. It lives in its own private penthouse. The comment was concerning my upload schedule, and it was, If anime studios can make an episode of anime in one week, then these YouTubers can make a video in a month. Initially, I reacted like, You think that's how this works? You think anime studios post an episode and go, Great work, team! Well, time to make the next episode this week. Hope none of you have any plans. I know the working conditions in Japan are bad, but sheesh. I guess all the animators are just slacking off between seasons then, huh? And as I thought about it more, I realized, ah, I can't get too mad. This person is just uneducated about the animation industry and is probably a minor. And then I thought, hey, I know a bit about animation behind the scenes. Maybe I could talk about being an artist and educate people on the animation pipeline. So that way, I won't get any more uneducated comments for this video. When I say artist, I'm going to be talking about the Google definition of an artist. Noun, a person who produces paintings or drawings as a profession or hobby. You know, the pen and paper artists. I'm not really going to be talking about artists who make music or birthday cakes or take black and white photos of sunsets because... I want to talk about cartoons. I make cartoons. Now, it should come... I don't know if you guys heard that, but it's like a loud car just ran by my house. Drove by my house. Okay. No surprise that I'm pro-artist. Well, not a pro artist. Are you kidding? I know my skill level. I still can't draw fingers. What I'm saying is I will support anyone who wants to make art. If you're making art as a hobby, then that's a really great creative outlet and having something physical as an end result is incredibly rewarding. But if you want to turn making art into a full-time job, you might want to sit down and consider a few things. Like, are you sure you don't want to go to law school? The biggest challenge all artists face is they have to eat food to survive. And in this capitalist society, food costs money. So artists are challenged to somehow take being good at making shapes and turn that into money. I know of four ways an artist can make a living. The first way is to be so good at art that people will pay money to hang it up in their house. The second option is to make caricature drawings at beaches and tourist traps. The third option is to sell your plasma. And the fourth option, which is the most common option, is to make drawings that people will pay you to make and do a little bit of option three on the side. Some artists will take commissions, which is basically an artist going, hey, I'll draw whatever you want, asterisk for $100. And people will go, what the f Art should be free. I was gonna give you so much exposure to my 50 Twitter followers. <laughs> or people will go, I want you to draw this cute animal character I made, and while at first your price might seem a bit high to the uneducated, I understand that art is a time-consuming process and you need to eat too. So here's a crisp one hundo. But another somewhat more stable idea is that artists will get jobs at studios or work for a YouTuber and we'll be like, hey, we'll give you money if you draw specifically what we want and if we don't like your art, we'll make sure to communicate clearly what we would like changed and work as a team to do the best we can. Or you're fired! And that leads us into animation. An important thing to remember for animation is that drawings equal time plus money. Exactly how much time? Well, to answer that one commenter's question, no, an anime studio does not make an episode of anime in one week. I think. 
South Park is what making an episode in a week looks like. And truthfully, that's very impressive. I take months trying to figure out what the heck I'm even gonna talk about. Making a single episode of a cartoon from scratch. He's not lying. I've been trying to do that for you for my YouTube, like that's it's not about me. Takes about two years. Don't believe me? Well let's see what Yakko from the 2020 Animaniacs has to say in the very first episode. At least, we still think there's a President Trump. You see, the writers are writing this in 2018. Now that doesn't mean it took 26 years to make the first season of The Animaniacs. There's a lot of moving parts that happen when producing an animated TV series. For starters, the whole season of the show gets made at the same time. While the writers are writing episode 12, the storyboard team is boarding episode 3, and the design team is designing the bowling shoes that are going to be worn in episode 6 and it's someone's entire job to make sure that everyone's doing their job. This is called the Animation Pipeline. And there's so many other departments that I could honestly make a whole other video about this pipeline. If you're interested, I'll do it. But just know that it takes roughly two years to make a season of a cartoon show, and that's why when shows reference memes, they're extremely outdated. You know, like a boss! <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? This exterior nighttime city skyline background? This background was drawn by one of my background artists, Annie Loomis, and it took seven hours to make. And it was used specifically for this clip. If it wasn't for the Cats movie, I would have thought Hollywood knew what they were doing too. It lasted for four seconds. Seven hours of work, four seconds of content. So before we continue, I'm gonna make you all sit and appreciate this background for another four seconds so I can double the value of this background. Yes! What? My paycheck doesn't come through until next week. Isn't that a bad thing? Nope. <laughs> Backgrounds can be a time-consuming process, and the whole purpose of them is to be in the back of the ground. They're not even the focus. So storyboarders will sketch out a scene to set the staging through layout, posing, and character expression. And during this phase, I'm trying to find places where I can reuse backgrounds or take pieces of other backgrounds and Frankenstein monster them together to make an entirely new background. Like you know, I give total respect to artists because like he said, that background, he said it took seven hours and Waldo looked at it for like, what, eight seconds? Major, major, major gratitude towards that artist. I don't see how y'all do it the major gratitude. It looks very, very articulate, as I would say. Anyway, let's go. Like how I used the city background to be outside this window, or how I took the buildings from this background, the bushes from this background, and the bench from this background and made an entirely new background. And hopefully, none of you noticed. Am I being cheap or cutting corners? Absolutely. But that's the point. That gives another background artist more time to make something else, like this James-themed city skyline, instead of having to draw 20 different backgrounds of a bedroom. We already have a bedroom. Let's just do something else, please. It's not being lazy. It's getting the most use, the most mileage out of your hard work. I see this next story pop up on Twitter about every month, and it makes me want to stab my eyes out. If you look at this scene from The Jungle Book and this scene from Winnie the Pooh, these two similarly proportioned boys are eerily moving in the exact same way. Wait, was this plagiarized? Did someone from Winnie the Pooh plagiarize the Jungle Book? No. Remember what I said about drawings equal time plus money? Well, back in the old days of animation, before fancy graphics cards and floppy disks, animation frames had to be physically painted onto floppy transparent sheets called cells. So animated movies were essentially a really long flipbook with over a hundred thousand hand-drawn painted pages. Back then, drawings equaled even more time and even more money. This whole sequence had to not only be drawn 24 times a second, but it also had to have the correct timing to look like a little boy was jumping on rocks. Just because you drew 24 Mowgli's doesn't mean they're going to look good when you play the frames together. So if you're making a cartoon movie in the 70s and you need a scene where a young boy character is just being a dude and throwing rocks and you need a really climactic fight scene, are you going to spend the time and money drawing another boy throwing another rock when someone else already did that 10 years ago? Or are you going to reuse the animation the studio already made and then have more time and budget to make an even epicer fight scene? If these movies were from two different studios, then yes, that would be a completely different story. 
But Disney owns this movement of our boy Mowgli, so they're allowed to use that movement on our boy Chris. Turning your art into a full-time job is very difficult. I'm extremely lucky to not only have this opportunity, but to be able to build an amazing team of talented artists to create these cartoons and share them with you. And because of you watching these videos and supporting me, I'm able to reinvest money into the team so we can make better quality content and I can support more artists. It's a win-win symbiotic thing we got going on. So if you ever wanted to get into the art industry, good luck, get drawing, and start putting that portfolio together. I hope you all enjoyed this art rant, considering... See, not only is he very funny and witty and outgoing, maybe outgoing, he's a little antisocial, but he's also very educational, educated, and he makes a good point. Very good points. I don't know anything about art, personally, that's just me. Sorry for my camera shaking, but I know it takes lots of time. Lots of it. Like you said, two years just for one season. Bro, I do not have the, the patience for that. I don't think I could be an artist. I would lose it. I really would. But, like, seriously, shout outs to you for cartoons. And I'm talking too much. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. You get the point what I'm trying to say. Um, I'll be doing another video. Don't worry. I'm just trying to think. I don't, I, I, I'll, I'll think about it myself. My other videos. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you, are, uh, if you did, I am talking too fast today. I got to stop. If you guys enjoyed this video, you already know what to do. Like, subscribe, and share. Mostly subscribe. Please, I'm begging. Just, just do it. It's not that hard. But anyway, until then, remember to stay humble and stay hopeful. Sit us out. Peace.